Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I found this snake not 100, 150 feet away from my door. This is a ringneck snake, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about this snake. I will discuss its scientific name and how it got it. We'll talk about what it eats. We'll talk about whether it's venomous or non-venomous. We'll talk about whether it bites or not. And we'll talk about how big it gets. So we'll talk about the biology of this particular snake. And you'll notice that he's curling up his tail like that. And there's a reason he does that. And we'll talk about that as well. So stay tuned for Nature at Your Door. Today is the ringneck snake. Right here in your backyard. You never know what you're gonna find. And here's to make this invasive. There's a dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so this ringneck was pretty active when I first picked him up. But once he found out I wasn't going to kill him, he was pretty uh, relaxed with me. And the way he is right now, we can see some of his main features. So how do I identify him? Well, what stands out right now, of course, is he has a yellow belly. The southern species has black dots on that yellow belly and a very, very red tail at the end. This guy, the northerns, are more gray. And you can see he's a pretty gray colored snake. And of course, the real distinguishing feature is he's a gray color and he has a yellow ring around his neck. The southern species has a little division there uh, at the ring, and that's another way to uh, identify the southern subspecies. So this is a northern ringneck. He has very, very smooth, smooth scales. And I can tell you, it just almost feels soft to the touch. His scientific name is Diadophus punctuatus. And the words Diadophus comes from the Greek. The first part refers to a headband. And the second part, Ophus, means snake. So this is the snake with a headband, which of course refers to the yellow ring that's around its neck that gives it its name. You can see that it has a very distinctive gray color. And sometimes uh, that color is often much darker and black. And this one has a bright yellow belly. The southern species has markings on that yellow belly. And the scientific name punctuatus refers to the black dots on that belly. This northern species doesn't have that. The southern species also have a lot more red in the tail. And when you pick up a southern ringneck snake, he'll display that yellow and red on his tail as a... Uh, partly as a warning and partly to distract the predator from what might be actually be his head end or his tail end. These guys eat primarily small lizards, salamanders, and worms. Those are the primary components of their diet. But I'm sure they'll eat other soft-bodied creatures that they can find under a log. Their typical habitat is in woodlands. They like a certain amount of moisture. They are usually found underneath something, a rock or a log. This one I found under a log. They don't like to be out in the open. They tend to be nocturnal. They like to be under things. And of course, that's where their food prey is too. The things they eat are often underneath logs like this one. Do ringneck snakes bite? Well, I've been holding him for a pretty long time, and he hasn't tried to bite me. And if he did, he's so small that that mouth, I don't think he could actually uh, take a grip on me or do any kind of damage because of his size. These snakes are very small. An adult snake might go to 15 or 20 inches as a maximum. 
You can see that he's sampling the environment with his tongue. They flick that tongue out to sample the environment, take in molecules. It's a way of tasting and smelling at the same time. And when he pulls that tongue back into his mouth, he puts the tips of that tongue into the Jacobson organ, which actually has the sensory cells. So he'll continue to flick that tongue in and out. Now, these guys actually are venomous snakes. In their saliva, they have a relatively weak venom, has some effect on the prey that they eat. Also has two little fangs, but the fangs are way back in the back of his mouth, and so they really don't have an effect on people. When a ringneck snake is hunting, it will grab onto its prey, constrict it, and once it has it stabilized, it will bite it, penetrate the victim with its rear-facing fangs and some of its venom, and use that to subdue it. Like other snakes, this snake's first mechanism of defense is to try to run to escape, and its other mechanism of defense is to release a very foul-smelling substance from its rear business end, and it is very foul-smelling. When I first picked him up, he did that to me, and I can still smell it on my hands, and it takes several hand washings before it that smell is gotten rid of. So it's definitely a deterrent to predators because it just doesn't seem like by the smell or taste that this would be a very good thing to eat. Ringneck snakes lay eggs. A female ringneck snake might lay between two and seven eggs each year. Like other snakes, eastern ringnecks are frequently killed on roadways. When the snake tries to cross a road, it sometimes gets into trouble. And also, if they lay on the road in order to warm their bodies up, being cold-blooded or ectotherms, they rely on environmental temperatures. And I think it's pretty tempting for a snake to get out on a blacktop surface at night when the temperatures are cool and the blacktop is warm, and it allows them to pick up their body temperature so they can go back into the forest and actively hunt. The ringneck is probably the most widely distributed snake in America. I'm in Floyd County, Virginia, in the southern Appalachians, and it's fairly common here. There's a northern subspecies and a southern subspecies. It's fascinating to me, after a snake's been handled, how calm they can become. So I just found this snake an hour or two ago, when I first picked him up, he was very agitated, made every effort to escape he could possibly do. And now he seems very content just to sit in my hand. Fascinating. So this is ideal habitat for the ringneck snake. It's got a good leaf litter, lots of rotten logs on the ground. This is the perfect place for ringnecks. And this is where I found my ringneck actually under this log over here. So I'm going to take him and we're going to put him right back exactly where I found him. I'm a big advocate of taking a look at natural things. I'll keep them for a couple hours, maybe overnight, to uh, do some filming for educational purposes. And then I always, always return them in the exact place I found him. Here's our northern ringneck snake back in his natural habitat. I'm sure he's glad to get rid of me. So this has been Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here in ringneck habitat. I'd love to hear from you if you find ringnecks, whether you have the northern ringneck or the southern ringneck. Northern ringneck has a complete ring and just yellow on the belly. The southern ringneck has a broken ring. There's a little space in the top that separates the ring. It's, it doesn't go all the way around. And it has black dots on its belly and a redder tail. And outside of Virginia, a lot of them do that behavior where they flip their tail over when they've been disturbed and show a red part and a yellow part and try to act poisonous or distracted. 
So thank you for watching. If you like what I do, please subscribe. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you the next episode.